Section 10.2.21-T. 20 years ago, 45% of parents of children in high school felt it was a serious problem that high school students were not being taught enough math and science. A recent survey found that 177 of 650 parents of children in high school felt it was a serious problem that high school students were not being taught enough math and science. Do parents feel differently today than they did 20 years ago? Use the alpha, which is equal to 0.01 .01 level of significance. Okay, so first, we want to, to test the hypothesis. We always have to first verify the requirements, and that is the sample must be a simple random sample. Well, while it is not explicitly stated that the sample is random, it is reasonable to assume the sample is random. It is also reasonable to assume that the 650 parent, 50 is less than 5% of the total number of parents who have children in high school. So now we need to figure out whether uh, the sample size in the population proportion um, using this formula is gonna be greater than or equal to 10. So first and foremost, we know that the value of N is equal to 650. So we know the sample size is 650. And then we also know that the population proportion is 45%, which as a decimal is equal to 0 0.45. So now let's go ahead and use that formula where we take N, multiply it by the population proportion times one minus the population proportion and see if it's greater than or equal to 10. So we're gonna take 650 multiply that by 0 0.45 times 1 minus 0 0.45 and compare that to 10. So when we multiply that all out we get 160.9 and that is greater than or equal to 10 so therefore that verifies all the requirements. Okay now in step number two, we need to determine what is the null hypothesis and what is the alternative hypothesis. Now, we always use the equality symbol in the null hypothesis. Okay, so we're testing here where the population proportion is 45%. So therefore, we see that P is going to equal 0 0.45. Okay, and then the alternative, well, if you look here, the claim says, do parents feel differently today than they did 20 years ago? This doesn't say anything about greater than, doesn't say anything about less than. That means it's either going to be equals or not equals. Okay, so now we need to determine what kind of tail is this? Well, recall that when the alternative hypothesis has a not equals, that tells us that this is going to be a two tail test. Okay, and then what else do we need to know? We know that the significance level that we need to use is 0 0.01. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to find the test statistic. Okay, so using a formula for the test statistic is the following. And we know that N, which is the sample size, is equal to 650. We know the value of X represents 177 because that's how many parents of children in high school felt it was a serious problem, that high school students were not being taught enough math and science. We know that the value of the proportion is 0 0.45, and then we're looking for the point estimate. So recall that the point estimate is equal to x divided by n, and in this case, it's 177 over 650. So using the formula for the test statistic, it's going to equal 177 over 650. And then we're going to subtract the proportion of 0.45. And then we're going to divide that by the square root of 0 0.45 times 1 minus 0 0.45 divided by the sample size of 650. Okay, so let's see what that gives us in the calculator. So we have 177 
in parentheses divided by 650 minus 0.45. Then we're going to just divide that answer by the square root of in parentheses 0.45 times 1 minus 0.45 and that's in parentheses and then divide which is also in parentheses by 650 okay and then we're going to select enter and we get approximately negative 9.106 and we're on up to two decimal places gives us negative 9.11 okay so now let's go ahead and find our p-value so when we want to find our p-value it's important to draw our bell curve so that we know what we're looking at here so we know that we have our mean that's zero Okay, and we have a test statistic that is negative 9.11. Okay, and it's a two tail. And since it's two tail, that means that we also have a test statistic at positive 9.11. So that means we are finding the area in two tails for our p value. So our p value is in two tails okay so what we need to do is we need to take the value of 2 and then multiply it by normal CDF now we can pick either the left statistic or the right we'll just pick the left since that's what we got so we know we're gonna go a lower bound of negative 9999 we also know that the value of the upper bound is negative 9.11 and then we have 0 and then 1 as our mean and our standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go in here second distribution. We're going to go to normal CDF. We know that our lower bound is negative 9999. We know that our upper bound is negative 9.11. Okay, and there's our mean, there's our standard deviation, and then we're going to go ahead and paste. Okay, so therefore there is our value, which is 0. But now we need to multiply that by 2. So when we multiply that by 2, then we're still going to get 0. So that means our p-value is going to be 0 0.000. Okay, now if we want to do that on stack crunch, then we would do the following. Okay, we we'll go to our normal calculator. We know that our mean is zero. We know that our standard deviation is one. Okay, and then we have less than, and then it's going to be negative nine, oops, negative nine point one one. And then we select compute. Okay, so this gives us a, a, of a scientific notation number, which is 4.1191 times 10 to the negative 20, which means that that gives us a value of zero so let me go ahead and copy that okay so when you see this value you want to make sure that you know that this represents a scientific notation number okay so this represents 4.1191 times 10 to the negative 20 so that means we'd have to move this decimal place over 20 times to the left so if I did that, then this is the number that I would get. And keep in mind here that if you're using your decimal notation here, that means you're moving this decimal point from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Well, what you can see here is we still get 0 0.000. So um, just make sure that when you're looking at this scientific notation number, you know how to read that number. So it gives us the same p-value brought into three decimal places, which is 0, 0.000. And if we multiply that by 2, you're still going to get 0, 0.000. 
Okay, and then likewise, if you use the table, right, when we look at the table, we don't see negative 9.11 because it's way farther than we would see here. And anything lower than that negative 3.4 is going to give us a 0, 0.00. Okay, so therefore, that's using the table. Okay, so now let's go to step number seven. So step number seven, we want to be able to compare our p-value versus alpha. So we know our p-value is 0, 0.00, and we know that our alpha is 0, 0.01. So in this scenario, what we can see here is that this is going to be less than 0, 0.01. And so therefore, this tells us that we reject the null hypothesis. And now we can state our conclusion. So our conclusion would be the following. Since the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that there is sufficient evidence that parents feel differently today.